All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Peak Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, July the 17th, 2022. I'm Pastor Darren Moore coming to you live from Portsmouth, Virginia, and I'd like to welcome you. Uh, let me do a check, make sure we're being uh, live on Facebook, that we can hear on Facebook as well. All right, perfect. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you've never joined us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God and we utilize technology, and we have a wonderful time. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us, God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love, and we thank you for everybody that's here with us, God. Father, I pray that today will be a day of encouragement, um, that we'll be able to understand some things even more clearly about how you've made us and, and what your design is for us. So, Father, I pray that today's word will provide encouragement in our lives and help us to grow closer to you. We thank you and give you glory. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. All right. So welcome, everybody. Um, so we always like to start out with our question of the day. And our question of the day is, uh, let's see, here it is. Okay. When have you visit, visited somewhere and felt welcome to return? When have you visited somewhere and felt welcome to return? Talk to us. Now, see from the responses, we had uh, my buddy Corey Goss. He said at Chick fil A. That was good. That was good. And I also agree with that. You know, one of the things I, I love about Chick fil A is they have great customer service. You know, even to the point where we've almost defined a level of, um, we've defined Chick fil A niceness. Because you, when you go, you feel welcome to return. Anyone else? Can y'all hear me on Zoom? Yeah, we can hear you on Zoom. Okay. Yeah. I would say some people's houses that I've been to. Uh oh. We got some feedback there. Okay. Yeah, so I would say there's been somebody's house that I've gone to where I felt like, oh, yeah, I could come back here. Okay, so it's somebody's house? Yes. All right, that's good. Everywhere I go. Anywhere else? Um, Anyone else? I, uh, I went to this church one time um, when I visited uh, my sister in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I went to her church, and everybody there was just so welcoming and just so nice. And I liked it. I, I felt like I could come back. Okay, amen. So now for me, uh, and I'll share mine real quickly. Um, it was years ago I decided to, I uh, came down to Virginia, uh, as you know, many of you know, I'm from Delaware and New Jersey, and so I came down to visit my cousins in uh, Portsmouth, and I came for a one-week visit, and, you know, had a nice little time, and then one of my cousins and said, hey, have you ever thought about coming down here to live, you know, coming down here to go to school? And, you know, maybe you could stay with us while you go to school. And I said, nah. But at that invitation, it changed my life. And here I am. Because if it weren't for that invitation, there would be no P-Town Fresh. At least not for me. Might be something like Newcastle Fresh or something. But. Uh, not the same. <laughs> <laughs> not a good ring. <laughs> All right. Or SG Fresh. What is that? Uh -uh. Simon's Gardens, my old neighborhood. Uh, no, no. no. That, that's only bad. Pizza Fresh is better. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Jacksonville Fresh. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So um, let's take a look at this. So um, we've been studying in the book of First John, and so we're going to continue on there. And so I'm going to begin uh, right at uh, verse 18 for context, 1 John chapter 3. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. <clears throat> for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. 
Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So the last time we talked about that and we really broke some stuff down, right? Um, we continued on. Uh, we talked about the two requirements that he said in his commandment. So one, and let me do one change here. There we go. And one change is that, uh, we number one, excuse me, one uh, requirement is that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua. Okay, and so then number two is that we should love each other. All right, we should love one another. And we also learned that the result of keeping or protecting his commandments or guarding his commandments is abiding in him. And finally, we were reminded of the importance of staying connected to the true vine so that way we could be pruned in order to bear more fruit. And if you remember... Uh, last time we did start out with, um, we left off with, uh, we had a nice little reference scripture in John 15, where, you know, basically, you know, as we mentioned that John, uh, first John and three was almost like the abstract, you know, just the little, um, just the short overview or synopsis of the big section or the larger text in, uh, John 15. And so now let's return back. Okay. So uh, today I want to reserve start in verse nine of First John, pardon me, of John fifteen. So last time we covered verses one through eight of John fifteen. Today we're going to start in verse nine. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I've loved you. Now, I want to remind you that all of this is said in the context of abiding in him. So let's look first at John 15, verse 9, okay? Because again, we're still talking about, believe it or not, abiding in him. And if we're checking this out on Facebook, we ask you to do me a favor, give us a shout. Let us know where you're checking us out from. What's up? Welcome, uh, uh, Chris. Chris. Welcome, Christian. Uh, so here we go. So the first thing says, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. So here's a question. What does it mean to abide in Yeshua's love? I guess to stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay, to stay there. Accept his love. To accept his love. Okay. So to stay there, to accept his love. All right. So the King James Version says, As the Father has loved me, so I've loved you. Continue ye in my love. And so this word for abide, or in the King James, the word is uh, continue, is the Greek word that meno, which means to stay, okay? And we've talked about this a little bit last time, but I want to really kind of drill this home. So when he says to abide in my love, to abide in Yeshua's love means to remain there like you live there. Amen? Amen? So that's what he's saying, to remain there like you live there. When that invitation, when there was an invitation, when I came to visit in 93, and my cousin said, hey, have you ever considered moving in and going to college and staying down here then 
that was a similar situation. Amen? Amen. And so I was invited to remain there. And I remained at that address for several years. And as a result, I ended up staying. My, again, my life was transformed. In the same way, God is inviting us to move in and to set up residence in the house of his love. Let's think about that for a second. God wants us to literally move in and set up residence. He wants us to set up and direct our mail to have it as the address as his love. Wow, that's kind of deep, isn't it? So let's break this down a little bit more. The father modeled for Yeshua how to love. Right? Is that, is that what it said? Yes. As the Father has loved me, this was Yeshua speaking. So, as the Father has loved me, then what happens? So, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. So, the Father modeled for Yeshua how to love, Yeshua modeled for us how to love so we in turn should what let me see see if y'all can fill in the blank here model christ's love for us say again model christ's love for us all right we should model christ's love but not just for ourselves, but for who? For others. Y'all see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he was saying to model the love that Christ has for us. I could be wrong. Oh, okay. All right. Right. Okay. And and so, but again, the whole purpose here is that we in turn should model the same love that he has for us towards others. So we have to be that model and that example for others. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's a significant responsibility because this isn't a class that you enroll in. This is object lessons continually. So every day when we live out our life and our daily situations, people are supposed to be able to look at us and see the model reflected of his love. And watch this. That means we should remain in the house of his love even when everybody else is acting crazy outside. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been to been in a situation? Or I, well, I'm not even going to say if you've been. I know I've, I've been and I've seen a situation where, you know, in, in one of my old neighborhoods when I was a young person, um, there was this girl, you know, who was one of my friends. And so somebody else wanted to fight her. And so, you know, she did one of these things where, you know, everybody was outside of her house saying, come on, come on, let's get it on. Right? Has anybody been in a situation like that? Yes. Yes. When people have been baiting you and trying to get you to come on outside to fight. Well, I want you to see that in this situation. God even still wants us to do what? Remain in the house of his love. Are y'all catching this? Yeah. yeah. So even when, watch this, the drama storms are raging outside, we need to do what? Yeah. Remain in the... Um, in the in, in, 
remain Lord. In, in the house of his love. Amen? Yeah. All right. Now, one of the things we got to realize is that our choice to remain or continue in the house of Yeshua's love models for others and teaches them how to continue in the same. So, here's a question for you. What do we teach or model for others when we choose to not abide in his love? Um, that's when people they might, they might call you a hypocrite or they might say y'all Christians are all you do one thing you say something different okay. um, you know basically it's not a good witness or it'll make <clears throat> excuse me it'll make people not want to you know follow God alright say that one more time I say it'll make people not want to follow God like they see what you're doing and see how, again, like this person said, you're being a hypocrite, then they don't want to, you know, be a part of his kingdom because of what they see. Mm. And that's deep because we got to realize that we have a part to play in that. And, and if we're honest and transparent, I think that we would agree, you know, that there's been some times we haven't always made the mark of abiding in his love. We've shown and demonstrated the wrong example. And as a result, have even caused others to stumble. All right. Amen. So that, 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 that means that we have to be held to a greater level of accountability. Because others are depending upon us. They're watching our response. And, and it's almost like, and, 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 it, and it's almost sometimes unfair because it's like, you know, our life is under a microscope. You know, and so, but when we met, miss the mark, it's readily seen. But we make it, we don't even hear anything. Because that's what we're expected to do every time. Amen? Amen? Amen. So here's a question for you. Another question. What's the secret then to abiding in his love? What do you think the secret is to abiding in his love? Talk to us. Uh, you got to stay in his presence. Okay. You got to stay in his presence. Keep his commandments, have a communication with him. Well, that's pretty much what Ms. Versa says, stay in his presence. Yeah. Uh, have a relationship with him. Okay. Keep his commandments and have a relationship with him. Let me stop right there. If we take a look at John 15, verse 10, listen to this. If you, what? Keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Mm -hmm. So what's the secret? Keeping, protecting, and guarding his what? Commandments. Exactly. So, and, and, and let's even take a look at a big picture here. <laughs> Even Yeshua, as great as he was, as powerful as he was, remember Satan said, came to him and said, hey, look, if you want, all you got to do is say the word and the angels will catch you, <laughs> right? As powerful as he was, even Yeshua kept his father's commandments. And by doing so, abided in his love. What makes us think that we should be any better? Some of us feel or act like we can not keep his commandments and still get the benefit of abiding in his love. But it doesn't work that way. 
Amen. Amen. Therefore, if we do keep Yeshua's commandments, then we will abide in his love. Thoughts, questions, comments, response. Anyone? I mean, I think it's pretty self explanatory. You need to keep God's commandments in order to abide in His love. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think you can get, you can simplify anything more than that. Okay. All right. So let's continue on then. Uh, and welcome to Nobu T. Mackell. So verse 11 of John 15, for those who are just joining us. Let me just put something in the chat. These things. Oh, let's see. Christina said, you have to keep at your heart. Practice it. Amen. And that's a that's a challenge. Because again, we talked about in order to keep it in your heart, you gotta first study yep. to know it. Mm -hmm. Many of us don't, you know, I'm I'm gonna tell you the truth. You know, it's coming to a point where the natural reaction of people isn't to open up the word of God for themselves but to scroll on their timeline and find their latest motivational teaching. And so that's one of the things we have to do. We have to retain the appreciation of God's word. And we have to model that. Amen. Amen. So, all right, and let's see. Uh, Christina says you have to study and apply the concept. Repetitive and feel the word. Understand the concepts given from the Lord. Amen. We got to rehearse those things in our heart. We got to make this a daily practice. Especially in this toxic society. Where everything else is in contradiction. All right, so let, let's continue on. So verse 11 says, these things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that what? Your joy, your joy. Your joy may be full. See, here's the secret. If we, number one, love each other. Number two, Keep his commandments. And number three, abide in his love. Mm -hmm. Then what will happen? You will have joy. We'll have joy, but not just have joy, but our joy will be full. I got a question for you. Now, you know, we have these little, especially now that it's COVID, you know, I remember at our camp that I was in this week, you know, every student that came in, the first thing they did before they gave them their badge, before they let them sit down and join the group, was they did what? They took the little temperature reading, right? And that's almost the norm wherever we go now, especially in a group setting, isn't it? Yeah. You know that even when we go to when I go to martial arts to train, they shine that little thermometer on you. You know it does that surface contact temperature, and you know they determine. Uh oh, if you got a temp, you ain't coming in. My question for you, just like you have a thermometer which reads the temperature. If we were to have a device like that and 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 place it at your forehead or, or at your heart what would your joy meter say 
What would your joy reading be? Hmm. Something to think about, right? Because mm-hmm. we may that that may not be something that you know we think about all the time. But I want us to see this thing here. That some of you, your joy is like your gas tank right now in this economy. And and gas prices have reached, you know, at one point they reached $5. I'm not sure what they are right now. I haven't refilled in a little bit, thankfully. But, um, you know, I know that they were tipping $5. And I remember back in the day, I'm, I'm showing my age, you know, Back when some of my boys, you know, got their license and stuff like that, and we wanted them to take us somewhere, but like, yo, hey, can you put some, uh, you know, you know, put a little bit in the tank? I got you. I got you. Here, here's a five spot. That five dollars back then would almost would halfway fill up the tank. Yep. You were you were doing something with five dollars back then. Yep. Five dollars now. You can barely close the cap. (laughs) You know, it it doesn't even do anything. Like, what? That's just, that that just evaporated (laughs) before you can close the cap. But watch this. Some of us, because of that, what we do, and, you know, is that you haven't been putting in as much gas in your tank as you usually do. And instead of driving around like your norm be a, a full tank or keeping it at half full as some people do or keeping it full, you drive around with an eighth of a tank to the point where it barely reaches the first line. And then when you know when you when you, get it, when you can't get any more, okay, I got to get a little bit more. Got to get a little bit more. Has anybody done that? Yeah. 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 Unfortunate. All right. Y'all be testing your gas tanks right now. Y'all, y'all be really trying. Y'all doing some experiments out there. Y'all like, okay, it says E, but the light didn't come on yet. Yep. It's a hill. Or, you know what? Ooh, I can coast down here to save a little bit of gas. Right? And, and, and you trying to see or, or, or get to the point where, well, you know what? The light did come on. But I wonder how long it is before it actually stops. <laughs> Maybe I think I got like five more minutes left. Right? And so we have to be careful. Why do I say that? Because you're riding around like a you treat your joy in the same way. You try to ride around on a quarter of a tank praying you can make it to your next destination. Wow. But one of the things I need you to understand is that that is not the way that God intended us to be. We can't live life like that. What we need to do is we need to fill up our joy tank so full that we can go anywhere that we need to go. Amen. 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 See, in this passage, we see two things. One. He wants his joy to do what? To remain and to live in us. And number two, he wants our, what, joy meter to be full. Would you all agree? Yes. Let me, let me read that back. Let me make sure. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may what? Remain in you. And that your joy may be full. So when he's talking about joy, it's the Greek word chara or kara, where we get charisma from, right? And so, but one of the things I want you to see is that this word is not just the joy or gladness itself, but it's the cause or occasion of joy. 
So when we're talking about joy in this context, it's not just the sense of having joy in itself. It's also inherently or implied relating to the cause of that joy. I got a question for you. What's the source of your joy? Or what causes or brings joy in your life? Talk to us. Uh, family. Family brings joy. All right. Family. All right. Good. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Okay. What else? What's your source of joy? Hope. Hope. Okay. Hope gives you joy. All right. What else? What 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 brings you joy? What's some of your sources of your joy? Anyone else? Family. Family. Okay. Good job, baby. All right. So you see Christina's in the chat. She said hope and being a good steward. Oh, amen. Hope and being a good steward. That brings you joy. Amen. John said, okay, air. <laughs> air. That was crazy. Like AC? Yeah. Huh. Oh. That was Everything. actually Tasia. Oh, that was Tasia? Okay. Yeah. Air? Okay. Air conditioning? On a hot day? The air smelling nice? The air letting you breathe so that you don't die. There you go. Okay. Chris, uh, um, Chris, Chris had a good laugh. All right. A good laugh. So watch this. One of the things I want us to understand is that God wants our joy to be full. Okay. And so now let's talk about this word full. Okay. So here, and you know what? I like that. She said being a good steward. I just noticed that too. Being a good steward. That's, that's something that you, you're, you're, you know, when you're doing a good job of what God has entrusted you. Okay. All right. But watch this. I want you to see this, how the level that God wants it to be full. This word full is the Greek word pleru. Okay. Which means to make full, to fill up, to, f to fill to the brim. See, we have another term that similar to that in the terms of gas technology <laughs> we call that what topping it off amen and so instead of riding around on fumes what god wants us to do with our joy you you, you know because what we do is you sit there you know i i, I used to be a person who you know, I'll, I'll go into the station. I'll say, okay, put five on the tank. Put ten on the tank. Right? But now, what I do is I just stand there. I put the button. I didn't even know they had this button about 10, 15, 20 years ago. I didn't know it happened like that. All I do, I would just go in there, boom. But you can press the button and, and, and let it hold and walk away and let it fill until it stops and then some of you what you do even though once it fills and it stops you still press it a little bit more and a little bit more because you want to make sure it's completely full amen anybody did that maybe when gas was like a dollar 29 or something like that a gallon am i the only one I I the car. When going on vacation, we want to top it off. Okay. <laughs> See, they don't have to ourselves. I want you to understand. Watch this. God or 
Yeshua wants us to continually have our joy tank topped off with continuous refueling stations along our journey. Wow. Why is it important for us to be topped off with joy? Anyone? Because people are in the real top top. Because people, situations, experiences can deplete your joy real quick. Amen. Because people, situations, experiences can deplete your joy real quick. Amen. So watch this. Let me help you out. Let's take a journey to a little reference scripture, shall we? Let's take a look at Nehemiah. We're going to go Old Testament a little bit. Anyone take a guess where we're going? Building the wall. Building the wall. Okay. Chapter 8. And I'm going to begin in verse 1 for context. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women. And all who could hear the law, pardon me, and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it in the open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday. Wow. Can y'all imagine if I sat there and just read to y'all from morning, from six in the morning till noon? I wonder how many people we would stay on the stream. <laughs> Before the men and women and those who could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. So Ezra the scribe stood on a platform of wood, which they had made for the purpose, and beside him at his right hand stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Urijah, Hilkiah, and Messiah. And at his left hand, Padiah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashum, Hashpadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. For he was standing above all the people, and when he opened it, the, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. So can y'all see this scene here? Y'all, can y'all, y'all able to visualize this? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now watch this. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Joshua, Benai, Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatai, Hodijah, Maseah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites helped the people to understand the law, and the people stood in their place. So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God, and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. So watch this. Not only did they read, because some of us would have just been satisfied with reading and walking away. Like, I read it to you. You good. I did my job. But what did they do? They broke it down. So that way the people could understand it. And, and even look at this model. You didn't have just one person breaking it down. What happened? They walked around and helped them to understand. It, it almost kind of reminds me of when I was in the classroom and I was teaching, you know, how walk around the classroom to make sure that everybody understood. Or even like in the camp that I just had where it wasn't just myself even though I was the teacher, but we had different volunteers and staff members who would walk around and assist the students. 
to make sure they were able to interpret and understand and apply the directions. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see this here? Yes. Wow. All right. And then Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra, the priest and the scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep. Why did he say that? For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Because what happened is they now. Here's a what well, actually let me ask you. Why do you think they were crying? Anyone? I think because they finally understood what it took to walk in God's love. They finally understood what it took to walk in God's love. See, you got to realize the word of God had been, a. this was a time where the word of God had been abandoned. It's like some of us, you know, we had that Bible from our grandparents mm -hmm. and, and, and you just put that in the attic somewhere and, until you, you know, and, and you're like, wait a minute, I know we got a Bible around here somewhere, mm -hmm. right? It, it had just been put in the back of their minds. Yeah. But now they were reminded because you got to realize it wasn't something then when in order for the, the word to be kept near your heart, it wasn't like today where everybody has a Bible on an app on their phone. Or you can go and, and, and get mass produced copies of the Bible in multiple different versions and languages. Everything was hand copied. And so you had to be intent and disciplined to learn it. Because when they said it, you needed to try to retain it. Are y'all seeing this thing? Mm -hmm. But what had happened is they were so out of practice. They had just were doing their own thing. And now in hearing it, they're being convicted in their hearts and realizing, man, we have really been missing it. We've been messing up. Because one of the things that we realize is that, you know, it was under this leadership now that, you know, they were reminded. And so they were crying when they heard the words of the law. And then listen to the admonition. Then he said to them, go your way. Eat the fat. Drink the sweet. I want you to go ahead and end this fast. Y'all crying and weeping. Y'all probably got some sackcloth out there. Somebody like, give me some sackcloth. <laughs> but he said go your way eat the fat drink the sweet Sounds and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared he's telling them to do what have a party have a feast why he said for this day is holy to our Lord do not sorrow for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still for the day is holy. Don't be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly because they understood the words that were declared to them. See, I need you to catch this. Now, many of us have read and heard, you've quoted this scripture, the joy of the Lord is your strength. But you didn't really fully understand the context of what was going on. They had just read and heard the word of God for the first time in a while. Man, they were crying. The prophet realized that, man, these people are broken down. They don't have the fuel that they need to do what God is telling them to do right now. He realized that they needed to be broken, a broken and contrite spirit you won't despise. They needed to have some measure of humility. 
but not to the point where they were broken and, and, and de destroyed and condemned. Amen? He needed it to take them to conviction, not to condemnation. And so he realized they needed to balance this out. See, some of you, even in your recipes, you realize for the proper balance, watch this. So you can have the spice or the salt, but if something is too salty, what's something that you can do to help it out? You cannot. You can add a little sweet. Mm -hmm. Right? Th there's a level of balance. And so one of the things that he realized, he said, you know what? We need to bring balance. Some of us are walking around broken and 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 weighed down under this cloud and mountain of depression and wondering why we have trouble making it the next day. The problem is you're trying to travel using the wrong fuel. You're trying to use the fuel of Facebook or, or the fuel of, of uh, you know, your own strength or your own, uh, your, your own um, affirmation. Uh-uh. Because what you got to do is realize what the source of our strength is. Here's a question. How far can you get on watered down gas? Mm. It's not good for your car, but not far. <laughs> not far and see something else some of us have been trying to go around on this watered down gas watered down fuel but you don't realize it might get you from a place from A to B but you ain't never getting a D or F why because what's going to happen is that water although it's, it's it, it stretches the gas and it's cheap now for you to purchase <laughs> The problem is it messes up your fuel filter and it messes up the entire process. So now you not only just need another gas, need some more gas, but now you need to replace your fuel filter and you need a fuel pump. All because you didn't use the proper fuel in the beginning. Some of y'all need a fuel filter exchange. You need to get the real joy. Mm. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And what does that mean? What does this mean by this term of strength? When we think of strength, we think of, whoo, I'm going to work out. I'm going to get my Planet Fitness on. I'm going to do my little uh, mix fit. I'm going to go crazy up in here, right? Yeah, physical and mental strength. But... Means but this isn't just our muscle. I want you to see this. This is something else that some of you may not have caught. You might want to take notes on this. See, the word strength in the Hebrew that he used here, it didn't refer to muscle. The word was maos, which means place or means of safety, protection, refuge, stronghold. See, here's a little revelation for us. God's joy isn't just a attribute. It's a place where he wants us to be protected, where he wants us to feel safe. It's our refuge. How many of you have been on a long journey before? And, and even sometimes you can even be on vacation, right? And you can enjoy yourself on that vacation. But how many of you know it's no feeling like getting a chance to get back and lay back in your own bed? Sure. Mm -hmm. To feel the comfort of your pillow caressing your neck and your head to snuggle under those covers that you're so familiar with even if they're raggedy and not as new as the one at the hotel <laughs> but it's no place like what <laughs> 227 and Dorothy 101 
What? Two two seven. Well, there's no place like home. <laughs> no place like your bed. <laughs> there you go, Faith. You sang it better than Daddy. No place like address classified. All right, so watch this. Joy. I, I want you to see this here. Many of you are traveling in a cross-country journey without the stop to refuel and revive yourself. You don't have that hotel to even change your clothes and get yourself situated. Yeah. And I want to say what's up. Welcome to my bro, Donnie Pinkett. My man from way back. Back in middle school, even. But... But I want you to see and understand. See, joy is our home where we can return and be replenished with enough strength to complete our journey. See, we need see the see even watch this. Even if you can't get all the way back home when you're on your trip, what do you usually do? You'll stop at a hotel. You'll stop at the end. So that way, you can what? Get a chance to be refreshed to continue your journey. Now watch this. There's another benefit of joy. Because it's not just for us. Let's take a look. So you remember in Nehemiah, the people did what? They repented, right? They realize they blew it. What's something you do after you repent? I'm going to take you to one more place, and then we're going to finish up. I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of the Psalms and to the 51st song. And I'm going to begin in verse 1. Listen to this. <sighs> Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Reminds me of John P. Key. Create in me, create in me a clean heart. Y'all remember that? Yep. And renew my spirit within me and me. Watch me on. Exactly. We're about to get to that in a little bit. Listen. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth. In iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. See, this passage was written by a great man, a great leader. 
But this great man, this great leader, much like Humpty Dumpty, had a great fall. Oh, wow. <laughs> and why? What happened? The Bible talks about it was the time that the kings go to war, and instead of going to war, King David decided to go on rooftops.com and checked out the newest offering on the timeline. Young Bathsheba. And her uh her lingerie. What what's that what's that brand now that uh what's her face got? Um Rihanna got what's that? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Is it Fenty? Fenty. That, that, yeah, there you go, that Fenty night nightgown. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> and so now look at what happens. He's all caught up. And decides to do what? And realizing, finds out, yo, who who is she? Who is she? He gets her, you know, he goes in her DM. Come to find out, hey, uh, you know, she married. Guess what? Don't matter. I'm the yep. king. He did not care. And hooked up with her. You said what? No, he was like, tell her husband to go to war. Exactly. Put him in the front. Because, see, what he tried to do was cover up. Because first, he, before he did that, he tried to bring him home. He was like, mm -hmm. "Look, come on, come on. You, you get a little, uh, you get a little weekend. Uh, what, what do they call that? Weekend a leave. Weekend pass. Okay. A weekend pass. Weekend pass. That's what it is. Here to the king's castle. You can come on back. I'm, we can have be a part of this party I got going on. The king, the and and the husband was so righteous. He was like, I can't do that, king. Yeah. Not when all my soldiers out here." I'm good. He was that loyal. Had that much integrity Uriah had. And as a result, King David tried to cover his tracks. Mm -hmm. he, that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get him, Uriah, to come home and be able to and sleep with his wife. So he wouldn't know. He was trying to match the timeline. So that way, David, Uriah would think that the baby was his. But it didn't plan work out that way. And the whole thing blew up in his face. And so he had Uriah killed. He sent him into the heat of the battle, he said, where it would be the hottest. On the front line. And Uriah died. And as a result, David took his wife, Bathsheba, as his own. But how many of you know that God is not mocked? God is, there's no secret you can keep. There's no way you can cover up to keep from God knowing. And so God knew. And what he did was he appointed his prophet Nathan to go and talk to David. God spoke to Nathan and let him know what happened. And Nathan went to deliver a message to David. And this is the psalm that David wrote right after Nathan left. Wow. That's deep, isn't it? And as we realize and understand that, we realize the posture of David when he wrote this. But listen to what he says. And, and, and I encourage you to go back and read through and, and, and study this. But look at what he says here in verse 12 and 13. Even in verse 8, make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. But then he gets down, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Give me a do-over, God. That's what he's asking. Press the reset button. And then look at verse 12. Restore to me the what? The joy of, my the joy of your salvation. 
and uphold me by your generous spirit. And look at the benefit of that joy, y'all. Then I will do what? Teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. I need you to see what had to happen. In this passage, we can see first, David had to get himself right first. But some of us, what y'all do is y'all try to get yourself right and you stop right there. But I need you to see he didn't stop right there. He wanted the joy of his salvation restored. He needed to get himself right so that he could be reminded of the big picture. That despite what he did, despite how he fell from the grace of God, if he repented, he could still be reconnected with the God of his salvation. <clears throat> His deliverance, the one who we call Jehovah, whose son is Yeshua, whose name means God is salvation. Why? Because David knew that he had a responsibility to teach sinners to share the love of God with them so that they would also convert to following him. Wow. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Sounds like letting our fruit remain. Wow. And the title of today's message is to leave the light on. <laughs> Why? Anyone? Yes, that's why it's called Leave the Light On. Mm -hmm. This is like the hotel. Exactly. They'll leave the light on for you. All right. Thoughts, questions, comments, responses. Well, I really like the story of David because he did a lot of messed up stuff, but he was still called a man after God, God's own heart mm -hmm. um, because he always managed to find himself in the presence of God. Amen. All right. Amen. Anyone else? Thoughts, questions, comments, responses? <clears throat> I know it dropped a lot today. I think it's a very vital message and something that needs to be a constant reminder for a society where they think that they have to be a certain way in order to, to come to God. You know, like they have to prepare themselves. They have to get ready to come to him. And it's just a time for, for many that just never happens and they don't even take the time to realize, and I'm speaking for myself, to realize what it even looks like to be ready to come to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I think it's easy to fall away from God and not realize what you had until it's gone. And then once it's gone, it's like, you know, that's when you wake up and it's like, oh, my Lord, what did I do? You know, and that's the time to get on your knees and to beg for God's forgiveness and come back into your life and, you know, to help you, you know, reinstate you into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. That's Anyone? true. Anyone else? He said he came, he came not to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. And 
they did a whole need not a physician. Amen. He said to himself, physician, heal thyself. Amen. He said, your righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees. Amen. That's good. And here's a question. What about this concept of joy? And in the importance of the life of a believer. Did that speak to anyone today? Yeah. Um, pretty much um, as far as keeping his commandments, abiding in his word and his love, that right there, <clears throat> doing that, excuse me, <clears throat> you'll have joy um, and your joy will be full. So pretty much if you're walking around and you figure and you're depressed and you know, you just don't feel right. You need to ask yourself, like, am I abiding in his commandments? Am I doing the things I'm supposed to do? Because if you are, you wouldn't feel the way that you're feeling. So, but yeah, definitely that did speak to me today. Amen. All right. Awesome. Anyone else? Thoughts, questions, comments, response? Your last moment. Last call. Well, I agree with what Santa was saying. When I mean, you think about what joy actually is, and the opposite of joy is, like she said, depression or uh, hopelessness, condemnation. Mm -hmm. And if you're in that state, it's kind of like a flattened out state where you can't pick yourself up, much less to try to pick anyone else up. You know, you're going to need strength to carry on to do anything. To let your light shine. I mean, he said it, you don't take a, a a candlestick and put it under a bushel, but you put it on a lampstand. That lampstand it takes some strength. You know, Jesus being the rock, that's that's all strength. And without joy, everything pretty much falls flat. Amen. Here's a question. Let me ask you: What what would you suggest to someone? What would and and this is the last question for the day. What would you suggest to someone um, who said that they had issues or challenges um, in, you know, finding joy? I asked them what have they tried. Okay. I usually tell them that they need to go worship and get in God's presence mm -hmm. and remember um you know, what he's done, but that sometimes you just need to go get in his presence and worship is one of the best ways to do that. Amen. Now that, that may work for a believer. What about a non-believer? Mm. What I usually do is um, if some, you know, somebody, again, like you said, have not, do not have joy or struggling with joy, I would pretty much ask them, do you have a relationship with God? Um, that right there. And then if not, you know, I would tell them, hey, you know, read your Bible, uh, pray, because those things right there will get you into, for, for one, you got to know his commandments in order to abide by them. So, you know, getting to know who God is and getting in his word, that right there, I always tell people is the answer to everything. It's the answer to everything because at the end of the day, God will not put no more on you than you are able to bear. So, you know, abiding in his word, knowing and reading his commandments and, you know, just showing the love that he shows, that he gives us every day. All that equals joy in your life. Amen. I would say as well, you can be the joy for someone who is an unbeliever. Just the spirit of God coming through you and showing the person that they matter mm -hmm. and providing them with the light and the darkness that they're going through at the time. She's mm -hmm. nine times out of 10. That's why they're coming to you and telling you what they're going through or how they're feeling. And building by building a relationship with, with those who don't know the Lord, it helps them 
to not only learn God through you, but also you can inadvertently become an indirect source of joy because they know with you, they find a peace, they find a happiness and a lightness where they can unburden themselves. Amen. And one of the things, just to provide a little bit of, uh, I guess, not just context, but um, clarification on that is that we have to be careful in allowing us I, I don't want to say that we can, I don't want to make us to be the source of anyone's joy because we're, I'm, I'm fallible. And so if somebody feels like they have to come to me to get a refuel, that's a problem because I might not be on that day. And right. so, so one of the things that I want to encourage and remind us is that we direct them. So we model for them, but we re redirect them to the source and we show them how to get to that themselves, if that makes sense. It does completely. And that was my, that's basically where you lead them to. But in the moment, what I meant was when someone says they don't have joy, sometimes just being in your presence or being around you as they're unloading their burdens, you are that, you at that moment can be a source of joy because you're that source of light. You understand what I'm saying? Like by the when they leave you, they feel a little bit of joy, or at least a little bit of I don't want to say light, but they they feel better than they did prior to speaking with you because well, you uh, And I was gonna say, well the word tells us to bear, you know, one another's burdens. Right. And so, you know, in in doing that, you know, there's a there is a, a lifting in that. Right. But again, you know, I want to just really clarify because I know some people who have the, the the wrong version of this works in their lives. Right. And so they're looking for people to fill them up when in, you know, one of the things is, you know, we get to the difference between joy and happiness and happiness you're looking at you know it depends upon something what happens in your life and around you but joy is internal you know it's something that you have and it's it's something that you know that's established out of your relationship with god and so it, it's 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 something that we have to help to cultivate and really guide them and and really the the big thing is the love and once we love on them then we hope that they can experience the joy of the Lord as their salvation for themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what's up. Well, with mm -hmm. that in mind, let's go ahead and get ready to close out. Can I uh, add a little PS on that? Okay, very quickly. Very quickly. Um. The PS that I will put on that reverts back to what I was saying as my my personal um, strength is in hope, which is what I direct other people to as well. When it becomes uh, when it becomes an issue where you're trying to direct a person to joy, to know exactly what joy is, to know exactly or to pinpoint where they are as far as their lack of joy and where their hope is which is a whole nother conversation in itself. I won't go into that, but just to open up those possibilities as an avenue to take, to get one Amen. person from that point to joy. Because practically you got to let them know, hey, what is, you, you know, their understanding of joy? What is joy to you? You know, mm -hmm. what, what is it? What does that mean to you? And this, you know, and you can only model for them. And again, we follow the same path. As the father modeled, as Yeshua modeled, and then now we model. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. So, everybody get your keys ready so we can move in. Amen. Get your key cards ready. So, let's get ready to pray. Father, we just thank you and bless your name today. We thank you for your word that you've given us today. We thank you for the power of your word. And 
and that you, you have a refueling station for us, God. You want us to abide not only in your word, but you want us to abide in your love. You want us to guard your commandments. Father, And you want us to love each other, Lord God. Father, and you want us to live in joy. Father, there's so many things that you want us to do. And, and, and But one of the things that I'm thankful is that there's no contradiction. The same thing you were saying in the Old Testament is the same thing you're saying now. And you want us to allow our joy to be full. So, Father, I pray for those who specifically suffer from depression. I pray for those who don't experience the fullness of all that you've intended for them. And they live life in a meager existence trying to just survive instead of thrive. Father, I pray, Father, that today you will help and encourage them and inspire them and allow them to know, Father, that you can be the source of their strength. Lord, that, the, the, that you can be the place where they can run into, that you can be their hiding place, their fortress, God. Father, we pray in the name of Yeshua, God, that you will open up these doors for them, O oh God. Father, even as, as some of them have been looking to find joy in other people and other places and things, Father, help them to understand that that joy can only be found in you. Yes. And Father, as a result, as we begin to walk in that fullness of the joy, as we get ourselves straight, then shall sinners be converted unto you. <laughs> They'll have something to taste off of to sample from our lives and they're like man I like what you got I want some of that how was it that you managed to stay stay positive even when everything around you is going crazy so father help us and we thank you God and give you glory in the wonderful name of Yeshua we bless you amen amen all righty. Well, thank everybody for joining us today. We love y'all. Be blessed. Lord willing, we'll see y'all for Wednesday morning, P-Town Fresh Pajama Prayer. And, and then uh, after that, return next Sunday. All right. So love y'all. Be blessed. Bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, All right, thanks, y'all. Be safe. Bless you. Good to see you, Malik. Good to, good to be here. Yes, sir.